Hello YouTube and welcome to an update video on Omega Craft. This is Omega Craft 4, the first version of Omega Craft to reach Minecraft version 1.14.4. And I just want to make this video to talk about the changes that have taken place since the 1.12 version and also some of the new features that are in this. So, first of all, because we're in 1.14.4, that means a bunch of the textures have had to change to match their new vanilla counterparts. So, for example, First of all, straight away, the ingots match that, and the dusts, again. Uh, but I've also updated the textures for the plates, uh, the ores, and the blocks. These use a new palette system, which means that they should be more consistent in terms of their colors, and actually, in fact, reduces their file size as well, which is quite nice, too. And you can actually see the blocks and ores in the world. And of course the ores use the new stone as their backing for them, which is also quite nice. And the blocks have a two sort of colour thing to them. Uh, next major change is to do with the way that energy is displayed for items and machines. So previously they would just have on their tooltip an amount of energy, 0 out of 32,000 forge energy, whatever, in this case. Uh, but now they have an energy bar as well, and so do these items. So if I go out my machine workbench, like so, and grab myself a furnace and a power supply of some description, such as a dark manner, pop that over there for now. Let us disassemble the furnace, take out its capacitor, charge its capacitor a bit, so 26,000, vaguely, and then put that in there. When I reassemble this machine, it will actually keep that amount of power in it. And if I disassemble it, it will make the capacitor that much power. So that when I place the machine in the world, it has that power in it. Another cool feature of this is that actually, if I were to then place the machine in the charging slot of here, it will actually drain power from the machine or battery, capacitor, ESD, any of that stuff. All of that can be used in those slots if you'd like. Um, and it will charge the device. Uh, previously that slot didn't really do very much. It was an alternative thing which actually was never mentioned but you used to always be able to put redstone in the power slot and it would actually produce power. About a quarter of the energy bar. It used to be a lot more but I've sort of reduced it a bit to make it more balanced I suppose. Uh, but now you can obviously charge it using those. So if I were to grab some cobblestone because it's a furnace it will actually drain power from the machine to do the work. Uh, there have been some slight GUI changes as well, so we now have this little thing here which tells you what machine it is, uh, which is new, and the power meter, uh, the um, processing bar looks a bit different and actually tells you the progress that it's going through. So, a couple changes here and there, but nothing major on the GUI size compared with the latest version of Minecraft 4, version 1.12. Yeah, a few things. If I take that out, I'll change that. And the same works in here. I can actually charge a machine directly. Like that, if I so wish. So, all those options are available, depending on how you want to do it. Another change is that previously there used to be a tri slot upgrade. I've now removed that in favor of a quad slot upgrade, which I feel is a slightly better option. I think for the price, it's probably more worth it. You know, in terms of like, it makes more sense, and also it's just better in general. So you can have a four-way thing, including splitting four-way if you'd like. Uh, I did notice a bug while I was testing this earlier that actually, when you hover over the last element in this tab, it actually makes the uh, little do that thing here get transparent. That'll be fixed in version four point zero point two, I think. Um, I know how to fix it, it's just a matter of actually doing it. <laughs> so that's a thing that exists. That's pretty nice, on the whole. Next is going to be talking about what we got. What else has changed? Ah, uh, yes. Transmitters. So these, well, they're a bit different to how they used to be, first of all. So the transmission system has received slight upgrades to it. So previously, they used to have only one face on them, which could either receive or push power to somewhere else. 
now they work on all of their faces, which not only makes them faster to put down, uh, means that they're just nicer to work with in general. Also, they all now have interfaces to show you what's in them. In this case, the energy one shows an energy bar. The item one, which always had one, shows obviously the filter here, which you can configure with the old options, but also the actual slots that are being worked with. The fluid one has a little fluid uh, tank in there, and the long wave transmitter shows the energy bar for long wave, but obviously it isn't compatible with normal power. You have to transform it with the uh, transformer there. But otherwise, they functionally the same as they were before. Just grab the receptor or connector of whatever type, grab your mega wrench, click on the receptor, click on the uh, transmitter, and they link. And then you can transfer power wherever, wherever you please, basically, or items or fluid or whatever, wirelessly. Uh, between 16 blocks, or if you put a connector in further than that, up to you. So, that's that. So, onto the new stuff. Well, first new thing is this internal water fabricator upgrade. This is an upgrade to the hydrator block, which I show you here. Electric hydrator. I need an advanced tier machine for this because I can't use the basic one. Uh, this one. The electric hydrator, if you remember, requires water for its recipes which you can view in JEI if you want. So we can actually view on here with the, uh, if I grab the recipes for hydrator here. So for example, we convert sand into clay. Uh, the recipes can also now be viewed from this section here. There's a recipes tab for any non-vanilla-esque machine. So basically not the furnace. So the crusher, compactor, plate form, whatever. There's a recipes tab. It shows recipes, so you can click on one of these and it shows the ghost items of it. So sand, red sand, or red clay. You can click anywhere to clear them, whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you hover over the slide, it will show you it. And it will show you obviously secondary outputs. If it has a secondary output, it will show you the percent chance we can hover for this bit. Uh, I may in a later version update it so it shows it here too. We'll see uh, how that goes. But that is the sort of multi slot. Situation, so recipes can be viewed there. The hydrator requires water, as I said, normally, and that's still the case now. That has not changed, so we'll put sand in here. We'll see it won't work for two reasons. One's no power, so I'll give it power. Uh, it's still not working because it needs a water bucket. So if I put water in there, into that slot, and now it has water in the water tank, and it will start processing the sand to make clay. I think it uses 500 water. Oh, it didn't actually use it. It did use up the water, it's just not showing it. it's used up the water. It didn't update. That's something I'll fix. <laughs> I'll look into why that's a bug. Um, but, as you can see, it used up the water. But if I install the water fabricator, it will just work without water. Currently, it only works in the hydrator. I do have plans, however, to make it work in the compactor, because the compactor has a recipe which, if I look at it, uh, turns a water bucket into ice. And in fact, I think actually currently there's a bug that means it actually consumes the bucket, if I remember from my testing. Something else I'll fix in the next version. Um, but I have plans to make it so that this upgrade will apply to this recipe. Uh, but we'll have to see because that's a bit more. Tricky. Uh, and we'll probably have some uses in other areas too. I'm not sure what else I'm using water. Uh, I kind of mainly just added it for the hydrator because that's the most reasonable place for it to go. Uh, but there are probably some other uses for water. Uh, we'll see in a minute, I suspect, because there are some ones I want to talk about with the new fluid system or fluid sort of processing chain that is in here. So, a new processing chain that's been added is to do with oil. Oil can be produced using an oil well. And an oil well you just place in the world and provide it with power, and it will produce oil over time. Normally, in other mods, when you need oil, you'll find it out in the world, 
and you have to go and actually pick it up properly, which is understandable. It makes sense. However, I find sometimes it can be a bit of a pain that every time you need oil, you need to go further and further to get more of it. So this avoids that situation by just having a single block in a place that just converts energy into oil directly. Um, which saves time on the whole. So that is the oil well, and it produces oil, and it will actually output directly into tanks that are placed adjacent to it, something like that, so that we can actually get oil directly from there. Now, this oil needs to be processed in an oil fractioning plant, which will require some other bits soon too. So the oil fractioning plant is a pretty cool block. It has an input tank for oil and four output tanks. Configuration on this allows you to change which tank is being accessed on a side rather than the slots themselves, which is different. However, that's how most of these fluid machines work. So if we want to get oil in this thing, we set the back to be receiving or to be the oil tank, and then we'll place transmitters down and look them up, and the oil will get transferred into here directly from there, basically. And now if we provide it with power with the dark panel, it will start processing this oil into tar. But not these other ones. So to get access to these other ones, you need this fractioning tar segment. And it says Sacratop fractioning plant for outputs. If you try and place it anywhere in the world, it will just immediately break. Um, if I was in survival mode, it would obviously used up when I tried to place it, but that's how that works. And if you put it atop the fractioning plant, see that by having one, it now means that this is producing naphtha as well as tar, but not anything else. So essentially each one unlocks a new tank for the process. And it won't go any higher than three, it'll again pop off if it can't go there. So this thing will process your oil into these many fractions here, these different hydrocarbons, which can be further processed using a couple of blocks, like the catalytic cracking plant and the steam cracking plant. So the catalytic cracking plant, uh, if I put it there, requires obviously power, it's the primary thing. It will take either naphtha or gasoline, and it will process it into gasoline and LPG, respectively. So naphtha into gasoline and gasoline into LPG. So it basically makes it smaller in terms of how big the hydrocarbon is, which can be useful, potentially. Uh, mainly for getting rid of naphtha, because naphtha is not that helpful, because you can't use it as fuel, but the gasoline you can. So if we now provide a catalyst, which can either be brick or another item called a zeolite, which is something you'll get later on. Provide it with bricks, which go in that slot. Uh, all of this is shown in JEI, by the way, in case you're wondering. So I'm going to see uses for bricks is the catalyst of cracking. And it will actually show me that it can go in that slot. And if we now provide it with naphtha, for example, it will process it and it will occasionally use up a brick, it's random, and it will produce gasoline at a rate. And this can obviously be extracted by just going output tank, and then we can just get some actual tanks here. And it will output into there and give us this gasoline. Which is quite nice. So that's a thing. And bricks obviously get used up. The advantage of the zeolite being an upgraded brick is that it doesn't get used up, so you need one of these. And that essentially just sets you up for forever, basically, for that one cracking plant. The next one is the steam cracking plant. Now this thing takes hydrocarbon, any of them, other than oil, and can be combined with water, which goes in from the other tank. So set that one to water. And then grab ourselves a fabrication tank, which we can pop there. And it will produce alkene mix. And it will produce a different amount of it depending on how big the hydrocarbon is. So going from top to bottom, they get smaller as you go. And that means it will produce less alkene the further down that list you go. So if we put LPG in, it will produce the least amount compared to the tar, which produces an awful lot more. And, well, you're probably wondering, well, if I'm dumping all of my stuff into alkene mix, what's that used for? Yeah. 
So that's used in the polymerization plant, which is the final block in this sort of setup. Oops. And this thing has a few recipes. It's got four recipes, in fact, that involve the alkene mix. So the alkene tank is the second one here. So if I fill up this tank, a bunch of this, bucket of alkene mix, I'm going to get my thing open. Nope, I should have to do this the manual way. It's fine. So fill this up a bunch with alkene mix here. And then configure this to be the, that tank there. You'll see that it's actually filled up both tanks, and in fact, showing off one of the recipes immediately is that when you put alkene mix in both the tanks, it will produce polymer. And essentially, it just combines things to produce refined gasoline, gasoline, polymer, or tar, depending on what you put in. Uh, the recipes are as follows so, liquid tar, so whatever's in the blue slot uses 10 millibuckets of per use, and 50 millibuckets of the alkene mix in the green slot. So tar with alkene mix produces actual tar item, which is used in crafting. Gasoline and alkene mix will produce refined gasoline, which is slightly more efficient for the combustion generator. The LPG could be combined with alkene mix to produce gasoline, so it essentially upgrades it, gives it more, uh, makes it more complex, which can be then used for further processing. And alkene mix plus more alkene mix, so for a total of 60, we can use polymer. And that can be used in crafting various things. Again, so all pretty cool stuff on the whole. So that's the processing chain there. I may expand it as we go, uh, but it's mainly just so you can get access to tar and polymer. That's the main things you need. But it could also be used as your source of energy. Because there's a new generator, the combustion generator. Now this thing can receive oil, gasoline, refined gasoline, and LPG as its fuel sources. Oil being the worst, LPG being next worst after that, and then gasoline and refined gasoline being better after that. In fact, I think I can demonstrate all of these quite quickly. So if I put all of them, so I grab oil. Uh, can I, does that work? It does work. Excellent. I did not know if that was going to work or not. It does. Don't even matter, I need this one. So if I put oil in here, it will produce 75 FE per tick uh, for 40 ticks per 10 millibuckets, essentially, with oil. With gasoline, it produces 150 forge energy per tick for 40 ticks per 10 millibuckets. With the refined gasoline, it produces 240 for 40. And with LPG, it produces 75, so same as oil, basically. Uh, for 10 water, which is quite nice. So this is probably the sort of end game power supply. Uh, it will continue to burn through even if the bar is full, so you will want to attach an ESD to this pretty quickly, otherwise uh, you'll be wasting a bunch of your fuels. Just saying, so be aware of that when you're going through this process. So yeah, that is the combustion generator. And the other generators are all basically the same as they were before. They use my new GUI systems that look a bit different to how they did, but vaguely the same. And finally, new additions wise, is this thing, the energy distributor. So this is actually a returning block from the old version of the Minecraft. Or it might even be um, TSOCraft. I think it was in both actually, but it works a bit differently to how it did before. So it says it transmits energy to a 7x7 seven seven cube that it faces. So the way it works is if you attach it to an energy supply, like this star panel here, it will transmit energy to any powerful block within the 7x7 seven seven area in front of it. That means three blocks this way, three blocks that way, three blocks that way, that way, and seven blocks out in front of it. So if I now pop an SD down here, you'll see that it's actually getting charged if I right-click on the distributor, it now has particles connected to it, so it's going to there. If I put down another ESD there, you'll see that it now has particles going to both of them, and this one's also receiving charge. And I can do the same here, and now three are receiving power, and then I can do another one up here, and now that there's four of them are receiving power, which is quite nice. So this is a really cool way to essentially get energy moved around your base 
and resolves a lot of the issues that existed within the old power system, which required you to place transmitters and receptors down everywhere. This makes it an awful lot easier. Um, and these aren't actually that expensive on the whole. Steel, electron piston blocks, pretty easy to make in the end. And generally speaking, should be pretty nice to have around. And actually, I think that's it in terms of this version. One thing that's missing currently is force fields. They weren't the best in the old version, and they are coming back. However, I have plans to completely change the way they work, and they should be a lot cooler as a result of it. Um, but I don't know exactly when I'm going to have them coming. So that's just something to make you guys aware of. They're on the way, but that may take some time. Okay, I'm just going to interrupt myself here quickly to show off the configs. There's a few options available here. Uh, so first of all, we've got world generation, which has all of the different ores and these various values for them. Further down here, we have the visuals. The RGB values. So this is for the side configuration and also slot colors inside the GUIs. You can actually change these RGB values to whatever you want. Um, and this works client side. So if you're on a server, you don't need to actually um, have it changed on the server for it to work. It will work purely for you. You do have to reload the game to make it work properly. However, you can make them whatever you want. That's mainly for people who are colorblind, or if you just don't like the default color palettes, you can change that there. There is also an option for classic GUIs, which, when enabled, makes the GUIs look more like vanilla. So if I quickly hide the notepad again, I can show you. So I've got the furnace open here. And if I turn on classic GUIs and hit save, and I exit out and then I enter it again, it will actually update to the vanilla counterpart. No reloading required for this one, just simply updates to its vanilla counterpart. And it works for all the machines and all of the things here because they all use my new uh, GUI system, which means it's all palette swappable, so I can add new palettes as time goes on, depending on what we want. Uh, it will even work on the dark machines as well, so if I grab out the, I don't know, the, what's a cool dark machine? Where's the dark fabricator? There it is. The dark fabricator in previous versions obviously only had a dark mode, um, but here it has, because it got classic enabled, which means it looks like vanilla, vaguely. Uh, these are obviously the colors that you expect from their respective outputs. And this setting does not require reloading, uh, of course, which is useful. And it does work for JEI as well. So the machines in JEI show up. And actually, they update in real time. So if I change that to false and then save it, uh, <laughs> one second. Have I, have I done something bad here? Nope, it's fine. It just. Doing, it's being weird. It's cool though. It does work. <laughs> Just changed it. So. so it should be able to swap back and forth. So as I change that from true to false and hit save. It doesn't always change immediately. I'll look into if there's a reason for that. But it usually gets there eventually. It will definitely work after a reload, but it doesn't always work immediately upon changing it. Uh, but it will actually change between the uh, vanilla palette and the other palette. And obviously the dark palette is here, and that looks basically the same as it did before. And you can view recipes. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this update video for Omega Crafts. Uh, it's been... Well, it's been a little while since I've done one of these, so... And the mod itself has been very dormant in terms of actual development other than this. In recent times but everything that i've made for this i'm new to 1.14 modding because it's a new version and there are probably quite a few bugs as a result of that however the actual code itself is a lot simpler for me to develop with which means that updates should be easier and theoretically faster as well as i find bugs so yeah 
things are looking good for the future of the Minecraft, I would say. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this update video, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.